Roswell Flight Test Crew, back here at the Interdrone Conference in Las Vegas. And I'm talking to John Mellisman from Sickdrone. How are you doing, John? Good. How are you doing, Patrick? I'm very well, thank you. And I was walking by their booth here, and I saw this hexacopter, and then I took a closer look, and I realized something didn't look quite right. Did this get broken in shipping, or what's going on no, here? No, no, it's working the way it's supposed to. What you saw there that was different about ours, that's different from pretty much anything else that's out there, is thrust vectoring. So we've been building thrust vector drone for to solve a bunch of purposes, not only uh, needs that we see in the market right now, but future needs. How does this work? What does it accomplish for you? So it does a number of things. The main benefit of thrust vectoring is increased stability. If you think about a traditional drone, let's say we throw a big payload on there. A traditional drone, if it has a gust of wind and let's say we have a huge movie camera underneath there it has to orient its entire body uh, most drones rely on the motor and the engine being in a fixed relationship to the body our drone does not our drone can orient those thrusters in the direction of the prevailing wind and as the wind is coming it can speed them up and slow them down so it can fly flat and level if you want it to or it can fly like a traditional drone you're not limited by having your orientation be a fixed relationship. And I bet you can achieve a uh, much greater top speed by thrust vectoring. For sure. Uh, you know, we're, we're not ready to stake any claims out there, but you know, we're, we're gonna software limit around 70 miles an hour uh, on this one, and then we're hoping to uh, put a speed package together that will uh, allow people to get cl really close to the FAA speed limit of 100 miles an hour, so. Very cool. We're not making that as a, as a, as a fixed claim, because we know there's a lot of fast and loose talkers out in the drone world and uh, we, we're going to prove it through data. And then what sort of missions do you see this platform being suited for? Agriculture is a, is a big thing to be able to get to whatever site you're doing, sense where you need to sense and have the ability and control to have your camera package be rock steady and then get to the next spot and then get it back in the vehicle to go on to your next job. The guys that are doing that kind of work, they really value their time. The speed at which they can do a job is really important. The other big application is search and rescue. The major thing we see is stability and control in the future is gonna be a big thing. Right now, drones are really good at sensing and looking at stuff. At, uh, they can go up on a 2,000 foot tower and say, hey, the light bulb is out. <laughs> hey, this, <laughs> this antenna isn't working. But we're gonna really want drones to, to actually fix things in the future. So I imagine our, our drones are gonna be orienting their engines in all different directions, thrust vectoring so that the platform can be rock steady and so that an arm can go change that light bulb as a metaphor, do useful work to benefit humanity. Very cool. Well, it's an intriguing concept, and of course, you're located right down the street from us in Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. This is exciting. We're going to have fun together. It's <laughs> Absolutely. It's a good yeah. discovery from the show. Now, this is just the beginning. So anyway, John, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much, Patrick. Absolutely. Take care. And from the Inner Drone Expo in Las Vegas, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Thanks again, John. Very Take care. cool stuff. This is sick.